This is the fourth unit dealing with soils. We focus here on the soil organisms that are important for soil formation and function. The soil is home to a great diversity of organisms from all of the five traditional kingdoms Plantae, Animalia, Fungi, Protista and Monera. These organisms are involved in all possible types of ecological interaction and many of them have profound effects on soil chemistry, structure and function. Many soil organisms have not yet been classified or characterized. Here follows an overview of the organisms typically associated with soils. Studies have shown that a litter of soil contains many different kinds of organisms. We'll examine these in some detail, but let's take a quick overview of these categories of organisms and their role in soils. Bacteria are the most abundant soil organisms. Some of them are parasites of plants and other soil organisms, but many are involved in the composition and recycling of nutrients in soil organic matter. Some have the ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen. Fungi may also be parasites, but most of those in the soil are saprophytes, breaking down soil organic matter. The roots of nearly all plants in the wild are associated with mycorrhizal fungi that assist in plant uptake of nutrients and water. Mycorrhizae are less important for many crop plants. Soil protista include algae that are able to carry out photosynthesis at the soil surface and protozoa that are predators of soil bacteria. Soil animals include nematodes, mollusks, slugs and snails, annelids, including earthworms, and arthropods, things like mites, insects, millipedes, spiders, etc. Within these groups, there may be herbivores, microbivores, predators, and detritivores. Now let's proceed to look at each of these groups in more detail. Bacteria are by far the most abundant soil organisms. Surprisingly few of them are parasitic on plants, indicated here by these thuggish looking dudes. Most are saprophytes that break down plant and other organic debris. Actinomycetes, such as Streptomyces, are an important class of soil bacteria that form filaments. They are involved in decomposition of organic materials such as cellulose from plants and chitin from insects and thus play a vital part in the turnover of organic matter. Many kind of bacteria are associated with the surface of plant roots where they seem to have a role in repelling organisms that might attack the plant. Now you can guess which might be the less friendly organisms in this slide. Bacteria are particularly important in chemical conversions involving nitrogen. They are the only organisms that can convert gaseous nitrogen to forms such as ammonia that can be used by other organisms. Some free-living soil bacteria can do this and others do it in symbiotic association with plant roots. In a symbiotic relationship both organisms benefit from each other. Many plants in the legume family, the Fabaceae, have root nodules that contain symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria belonging to the genus Rhizobium or one of its relatives. The legume family includes many important agronomic crops such as beans, peanuts, alfalfa, soybeans as well as some important trees commonly used in Midwestern USA landscapes, such as the honey locust and the Kentucky coffee tree. In exchange for carbohydrates from the plant, the bacteria provide usable nitrogen to the plant. Nitrogen is often the most limiting plant nutrient, so this is a benefit to not only the host plant, but to other organisms in the ecosystem that will feed on the plant. The cycling of nitrogen is an important concept in sustainable ecosystem. This cycle is very complex as nitrogen exists in many forms. However, 
Here we'll just concern ourselves with the role that soil bacteria play in this cycle. If we begin with the nitrogen in the atmosphere, bacteria, and especially symbiotic bacteria, are able to fix nitrogen gas by converting it into ammonium ions. Other bacteria carry out a process called nitrification, where they convert ammonium to nitrate. Still others reverse the whole process, returning nitrogen to the atmosphere, through denitrification, the conversion of nitrate to nitrogen gas. There are saprophytic bacteria that mineralize nitrogen by breaking down protein and releasing ammonium. These bacteria are an important part of the soil ecosystem. One must keep in mind that during the process of nitrification, mineralization, and denitrification, bacteria are also taking up nitrogen for use in their own bodies. This is particularly common when bacteria are breaking down organic matter. Consumption of nitrogen for increase in bacterial biomass can temporarily decrease the amount of nitrogen available in the soil to plants and cause nitrogen deficiency. A good example of this temporary reduction in nitrogen availability for plants is seen when mulch that is not yet fully broken down is applied to a constructed landscape. Plants covered with such mulch may exhibit nitrogen deficiency symptoms as the mulch continues to de be degraded by rapidly growing bacteria. It is often necessary to provide additional nitrogen to such plantings. Landscape professionals know to use only fully composted mulch, so-called ripe mulch, in the planting beds. Let's now consider the fungi. Like bacteria, most soil fungi are saprophytes and digest already dead material. When these saprophytes die, they themselves become food for other saprophytes. The process of dying and digestion, contributed by both fungi and bacteria, over time builds up an organic material called humus, a long-lasting residue that is important for soil structure and fertility. Humus is discussed in more detail in the unit on soil chemistry. Living fungi form thread-like mycelia that enables the fungus to spread through the soil, absorbing minerals. Most people are familiar with mushrooms, the reproductive structures of fungi that form from an extensive network of mycelia either underground or on decaying logs. One important group of fungi form mycorrhiza, which is a symbiotic association between fungi and plant roots and is unlike either fungi or roots alone. Most trees and agricultural crops depend on or benefit substantially from mycorrhizae. These mycorrhizal relationships permit exchange of sugars or carbohydrates from the plants for minerals required by the fungus from the soil. Some crops that do not form mycorrhizal association include many members of the cruciferae family, for example broccoli, cabbage, and mustards, and the Chinopodiaceae family, such as lamb's quarters, spinach, and beets. The level of dependency on mycorrhizae varies greatly among varieties of some crops, including wheat and corn. Land management practices affect the formation of mycorrhizae. The number of mycorrhizal fungi in soil will decline in fallowed fields or in those planted to crops that do not form mycorrhizae. Frequent tillage may reduce mycorrhizal associations, and broad-spectrum fungicides are toxic to mycorrhizal fungi. Very high levels of nitrogen or phosphorus fertilizer may reduce inoculation of roots. Some inoculums of mycorrhizal fungi, such as those shown here, are commercially available and can be added to the soil at planting time. This ends part one of soil organisms.